Uh, happy New Year, friends. Uh, we wanted to offer a moment of reflection at this New Year's time uh, for us to consciously move into this next year. You know, to spend a little time uncovering where we've been, discovering where the sacred has been in our everyday life this past year. And maybe just to take a few minutes to help um, us see what's alive and what's bringing us alive and how we might cultivate that life this year. So one of the things that you could do as you begin to start this sort of reflection is just to do a timeline of your year to help you remember what happened and how you felt, where life was, how you got through the hard things. And it sometimes can help to get a good visual of your year so you can quickly sketch it out. Um, I, this is a bit of my sketch, you know, just January, February, March, April. And some of the things that I did and happened, Brad was in the hospital in February. I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> um, the kids' birthdays, uh, other things. We had church on Easter church um, in person, uh, but everything else was online. You know, this past year, so you can kind of remember some of the events that happened. Um, sometimes it helps to, you know, go through your pictures to see what pictures you took or your day timer, if that helps. Uh, but this is something you could do on your own. Um, you could do a version of it with your family, your kids, your partner. And it might be really interesting to see what they remember and how they've processed their year. Um, so I encourage you to do that. You can do that now or press pause on the video or save that for another time to do with your family. Um, but what we're going to do now, if you've done that, uh, is is to, I'm just going to lead you and ask through a contemplative practice called the examen or the examen. I don't know how to say it. So I'm just going to say examen, which is an ancient contemplative practice uh, that you can, you know, we can trace back to St. Ignatius and his deep insights into paying attention to what leads us to life and what does not lead us to life. Right? And, and attending to that in the light of love that is offered. So I'm taking uh, the cues and the language for this practice from the contemplative artist uh, Jennifer Willoit. Um, she has made, uh, her business is called Cobbleworks, and she's made these beautiful examine um, cards that I find really helpful. So I'm going to be using some of the language she uses in her cards. So as we begin... I just encourage you to take a second to ground yourself where you are. Light a candle as a way of setting apart this time and space in your home. I have my candle right here. <laughs> and let's start with this. Let's just pause and give thanks for, you know, the things uh, from this last season of your life that were good. Give thanks for those things. Pay atten paying attention to um, the good things, the things that we feel gratitude about connects us to what honors us and blesses us, what honors the world and blesses the world. And that connects us to the sacred in our daily lives. It really does. Um, so when we give thanks, we acknowledge the ordinary stuff in our daily lives that we value and cherish, um, and make us feel like little kids again, right? So just take a few minutes to remember and give thanks for the good things in this past season. And then with your timeline in your hand, or just with your memory, review what happened in this last season. Review the events, um, the emotions you felt, the thoughts, the questions you had. Maybe review the routines you fell into, what you experienced in your body, and just and write them down in this last season. So that you can just limit it to the fall. You can try and do the whole year if you want. And when you've done that, take a minute, a moment, many moments to reflect on when in this past season you felt connected to God and to life and to love. And reflect on when you felt disconnected so you can go through that timeline and, re and remember those things ignatius called this consolation or desolation um, just paying attention to what draws us consoles us to love what diminishes our capacity what 
what um, <laughs> desolates us from love to love. And paying attention to those things tells us a lot. Now, if you, if those terms connected and disconnected aren't really working for you, there's a few other questions that could help open this up for you. So again, like everything we're doing, you can just press pause if you need to, to reflect. But you could ask yourself this, where did you feel most like yourself? And where did you feel like you were not being the real you? Where did you feel strong or vibrant? Um, or where and when did you feel drained and sluggish and just barely making it through? When did you dream about life with joy? And in what times were you feeling dread and fretting about life? When did you feel you could use your gifts and skills? When did you feel you were pretending your gifts and skills were not real? <laughs> when did you feel grounded and real and open hearted? And when did you feel you had to protect and had fragile emotional boundaries? So, you can hear those questions without judgment as to them being bad or good times, but just noticing what was going on in those times, what were the circumstances around those times. And then let's listen to those times. Notice the themes or patterns. Notice the disparity or um, between what you're longing for and what, what was. Like what might these times that you've lived through this last season have to tell you? This is the step in the practice where we listen. Listen to where you might need some mending in your life. Uh, and then listen to where you might need to make amends in your life out of what you've noticed. And this is a step of grace and compassion. Um, and only from grace and compassion can healthy accountability emerge. And this is a hard one, I think, for everybody. It is for me. But where might you need to be mending something in your own life? And where might you need to be making amends based on the consolation and desolation movements you've noticed? And then set an intention, right? Just set one or two things that you're being asked to do to mend or make amends. Um, one or two things you're being asked to step out in, to bring integration and wholeness into your life. Or you're being asked to lay down um, or rest. What is God speaking to you uh, through your own life in this moment? And lastly, the last step again is to give thanks. As you come through this process, give thanks for what's transpired, what you've been shown, what's good on this day. And you can write your own prayer or say your own prayer um, of that gratitude. And that's the practice. And as uh, we begin this year, uh, Road Church friends, I, I'm going to end this practice time, and hopefully it's a beginning time too, from Ted Loder's Gorillas of Grace, this prayer. Um, and it's a prayer to believe in beginnings. And wherever you are today, uh, we want to offer this as a prayer of hope for you and the start of this year. So this is called Help Me to Believe in Beginnings. God of history in my heart, so much has happened to me during these whirlwind days. I've known death and birth. I've been brave and scared. I've hurt, I've helped, I've been honest, I've lied. I've destroyed, I've created, I've been with people and I've been lonely. 
I've been loyal, I've betrayed, I've decided, I've waffled, I've laughed, and I've cried. You know my frail heart and my frayed history. And now another day begins. Oh God, help me to believe in beginnings and in my beginning again. In community, help us to make beginnings to begin going out of our weary minds into fresh dreams, daring to make our own bold tracks in the land of now, to begin forgiving that we may experience mercy, to begin questioning the unquestionable that we may know truth, to begin disciplining that we may create beauty, to begin sacrificing that we may accomplish justice, to begin risking that we may make peace and to begin loving that we may realize joy. Help us to be begin, a beginning for others, to be a singer to the songless, a storyteller to the aimless, a befriender of the friendless, to become a beginning of hope for the despairing, of assurance for the doubting, of reconciliation for the divided, to become a beginning of freedom for the oppressed, of comfort for the sorrowing, of friendship for the forgotten, to become a beginning of beauty for the forlorn, of sweetness for the soured, of gentleness for the angry, of wholeness for the broken, of peace for the frightened and violent of the earth. Help us to believe in beginnings, <clears throat> to make a beginning and to be a beginning so that we may not just grow old, but grow new each day of this wild, amazing life that you call us to live with the passion of Jesus Christ. Amen and Happy New Year.